very, very high melting point. So molten cryolite, which is just another compound of aluminium, is added into the mixture to bring the melting point down. This reduces the amount of energy that's needed to put into the system to melt the aluminium oxide in the first place. Because remember, for electrolysis, we need our compound to be molten so that the ions can move around. We have our two electrodes, our positive electrode up here and our negative electrode, which runs around the bottom. The aluminium ions are going to be attracted to the negative electrode, so they are going to form as molten liquid aluminium metal at the bottom. This can then be removed from the system. At the cathode, the negative electrode, we are going to have aluminium ions. They are going to be picking up electrons and turning it into aluminium atoms. At the positive electrode, the anode, we are going to have oxygen ions losing electrons and forming into oxygen gas. Now we need to balance this as well. So we need two oxygens over this side and four electrons in there. The formula of aluminium oxide is Al2O3. With aluminium ions being Al3+, and oxygen ions being O2-, you can see that two aluminium ions, the charge of plus three is going to be plus six, and three oxygen ions, the charge of minus two is going to be minus six. So that makes our aluminium oxide a neutral compound overall, which is what we're looking for when we're working out the formula of ionic compounds. Now the problem with all this oxygen gas forming at the positive electrode is that this electrode is made of carbon. Carbon and oxygen gas is eventually going to turn into carbon dioxide. So this positive electrode is eventually going to wear away or bubble away as the continual formation of oxygen gas takes off the carbon on the outer layer and turns it into carbon dioxide. So the positive electrode is going to need to be replaced on a regular basis.